Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, call the November 7th, 2024 me uh, meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission to order. Can we have the roll, please? Commissioner Sibley. Here. Commissioner Fenster. Here. Commissioner Tarek. Here. Chairman Lane. Here. Commissioner Jacoby. Here. Commissioner Barnhart. Here. Council Member Mayor Peck. Here. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, first order of business is approval of the September meeting minutes, September 5th. Do any of the commissioners have any questions, comments, corrections on those minutes? And if not, I would entertain a motion. So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Barnard. And a second. Okay. Uh, thank you. <laughs> It's been two months. We forgot how we do this. Um, a motion from Commissioner Barnard and a, a second by Commissioner Jacoby. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Therefore, the minutes are approved unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next on our agenda would be report from the chair. I do not have anything um, particular to go over tonight, so I will cede my time uh, to the HPC staff liaison. Thank you so much, Chairman Lane. Um, so I have a few items to report on. Um, first and foremost, uh, we have not received any um, administrative certificates of appropriateness since our prior, since our last meeting in September. Um, I have processed a, an administrative um, tax credit application, state tax credit application for um, a, a roof COA, for a roofing project that we did an administrative COA for. So just getting some of the final documentation to finalize that particular tax credit project. Um, Tower of Compassion, um, I've been in communication and submitted materials to the state for consideration for the state and national register. So I know we'll be um, that will be getting reviewed in January. I understand we have a ringer on that committee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that is something that's been done. Um, related, um, the Buddhist temple is apparently under consideration for state register listing. Um, I was made aware of this by um, members from the museum, uh, Longmont Museum, and have since been in communication with um, uh, representatives from H History Colorado who are working on that and I'm working to get in coordination with um, representatives from the temple who um, I'm hoping to get to a commission meeting to talk a little bit about that um, at some point soon. So I'm going to try to get that on the December agenda if I can get all of the cats herded. Um, I am definitely going to be encouraging them to seek uh, local designation as well um, since they kind of didn't really I, I heard about it from other people. So um, kind of related to that is that we are, I am working to improve coordination between um, staff at the Longmont Museum and me. Um, they are related to that. Um, they are going to be piloting a new afternoon history series next year and um, are definitely interested in having guest experts. Um, in particular, um, they have an, a, an item scheduled for April or a session scheduled for April 18th um, called Buildings Lost and Saved. And they have asked if anyone from the commission would be interested in presenting. Um, and they would also be interested in including a discussion about the role of preservation, of historic preservation in Longmont. So if anyone is interested in assisting with that, I would greatly appreciate that, especially folks who've been, you know, working in Longmont on historic preservation for, um, longer than I have. I'm happy to, you know, assist pulling any information together that we have um, and, and assisting with that as well and talking about the historic preservation um, role of what we do and everything as well. A um, couple other items. Um, at the December meeting, I, I, we will have uh, Damian Pachota from History Colorado who um, will be here to discuss the 15250 initiative that's um, being done. Um, basically, the goal is to list 150 new sites um, with particular focus on underrepresented communities um, on the state register in conjunction with the 150th anniversary birthday of the state of Colorado and the 250th um, birthday, the bisesquent 
by sesquicentennial of, of the United States. So he'll be here to discuss that. Um, in February, I have uh, Cherise Montgomery, um, who is a city, one of our city engineers. She will be here to provide an update on work that's going to be done on the Ute Creek silo as well. They're doing, some, they're planning to do some stabilization work and getting, getting the estimates and everything. Um, but you know, we thought it'd be a good idea just to bring her in, especially because there are some neighbors who are have been special, have had special interest in this project um, over the years. So um, just to make sure that this, that the, this commission is aware of what's going on there as well. Um, the only other thing I have on my agenda, on my item, on my report for now is just a heads up to think about the January meeting. So in for 2025, it falls on January 2nd, um, which is a little close to January 1st. Um, you know, it's a city holiday for January 1st, so we just need to probably think about whether we should try to reschedule it or cancel it altogether. Um, I know the January meeting is where we typically set the, um, um, where we can set the, priorities for the year, et cetera, and, and, and go over our, our administrative items. So um, if we want to look into rescheduling it, I can have Maria check with, um, check and see what the availability of this room would be. And that is what I have for now. I probably have missed something, but um, if it comes okay. to mind, <laughs> let Thanks. me know. Um, I will address that January meeting here in a second. The, okay. the one thing on my mind was just uh, because I got a whole uh, save the date for the preservation conference. Oh yes. Um, so if you might want to speak, especially since we got at least one new commissioner. Yes. So um, we do have, and I, I meant to send that out as well. I will add that note. Um, so for the new commissioners, for Commissioner Tarek, there is an annual conference um, put on by Colorado Preservation Inc., a.k.a. CPI, called Saving Places. Uh, this year it will be in uh, Colorado Springs. Um, there are typically some scholarships available for that, but this um, department does also, we do budget for um, commissioners to, um, for commissioners um registration fees for that. Um, it is in Colorado Springs this year, which is not quite as convenient as previous years when it was in Boulder and Denver. Um, yeah. So, and I know Commissioner Barnard, you were in communication with Jennifer from CPI about potentially doing a session. So we probably need to, I haven't back. you haven't heard back. Okay. So I will, yeah. And if you want to, if you want to copy me, that'd be great. And we'll see what we can get pulled together. It almost makes, it seems like it might make sense to do, if we, if they want it, we're serious about doing a session, it might be interesting to pull, um, if we could get some additional information on the Buddhist temple and kind of frame it as a larger, you know, role of the Japanese American, um, you know, community in the history of the state as well. Um, although I'm sure we could fill a, a full, session on Tower of Compassion as well, but it seems like it could be a good opportunity to do a larger framing of it. Yes, sir. You're, you're aware also that the, the uh, Buddhist temple was originally the Burlington Yes, House. yes. So it has a much longer history than just Yes, the yes, temple. and so that's, I think that's part of the Buddhist temple um, significance as well as I think the schoolhouse is somehow incorporated into it. Um, so I'm trying to, uh, trying to get a um, kind of a walkthrough scheduled for it. Do you have a date for that conference? Um, or? it is typically at. Give me one second. Okay. Is see, it is January 29th through February first. Okay. So it's typically like a Wednesday through Friday. Okay. So, in this case, that would not conflict with. That would not, yeah, it would not yeah. conflict with our February. Actually, interestingly, this one actually runs Wednesday technically through a Saturday. That's interesting. Um, so I'll get that information sent to the to the commission as well. Oh, yeah, thanks. Uh, Commissioner Barnett? I have it on Friday and Saturday. You have it on Friday and Saturday. Yeah, the 31st and the 1st, but. Yeah, the, their website says the 29th through the 1st. Okay. Yeah, that's what I have as well. Yeah. Um, did you get the, I think, did you get the, I think I sent you the email that I sent to Jennifer Charles Arrigo that had all of the attachments 
with the, uh, I'm pretty sure I sent it to you. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll double check. Yeah, that. I'll double check as uh, well. And that's what I would forward, I would follow up with her and so you would get a copy of it. Um, uh, one other thing, Sharon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the, uh, usually in January, we also set the, the date for the retreat. Correct. And we, we, we learned to do that earlier rather, setting the date earlier rather than later. So we have lots of choices of dates and location. Yes. So, uh, if we're not going to meet, then we need to talk about. We can we can make that decision in December. We don't have to wait till January. To yeah. Decide. Well, I'd like to take a poll of commissioners if we if who's interested in potentially uh, shifting the meeting to the ninth or. Um, I would rather hold the meeting and okay. and keep progress moving. Would it make uh, sense to have Maria to ch check on availability for, um, for this particular space and yeah. we can get that to the full commission I, in, uh, I for the, and the we can make that determination at the December meeting. Okay. Yeah. Why don't we go ahead and do that? The, just check on the seventh, uh, check on the second and the ninth. It looks like commissioner Barnett can't do the ninth, but check on availability. And then we can do a little poll of the commissioners between now and, and December to just sort of, Set that. If it's on the second, it's on the second. I don't necessarily have a problem with it, but okay. All right. Well, the ninth okay. is trending down. Trending downward. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll have Mar Maria. will take a look at what dates are what dates the space is available because um, that is probably the biggest driver of everything. Yeah. So, uh, just as a quick poll, does anybody know that they have an issue with the second? One potentially. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll we can throw out some options and okay. we'll we'll figure it out by next meeting. But uh, thank you, Commissioner Barnett. The retreat was also going to be something I wanted to yes. throw out there to just make sure we're tracking that. So, with regard to the retreat, if the Cal was the Callahan House acceptable for mm -hmm. folks last year? That's great. Okay, I will yeah. I will touch base then with um, Brittany and see what their what availability they have. For probably late January, probably early Feb, early, Feb, Feb, yeah. early February Maybe after, after the yeah, seven after, places, yeah. yeah, yeah, perfect. And that usually takes place of the the. Well, in the past, we've take it's taken place of whatever meeting that month has, uh, you know, the February meeting or the March meeting, assuming that we don't have anything otherwise on the agenda um, for COIs or something like that. Any other um, commissioners have comments or questions for staff? Uh, all right, Mayor Peck. Thank you. Um, as far as the retreat goes, remember last year it coincided with the uh, council retreat. Yes. So maybe you and Sandy can coordinate that. Personally, I think you get preference. <laughs> <laughs> we try to have a very interesting and lovely <laughs> retreat. <laughs> it's probably a little lower stress than the council retreat. <laughs> so I, I, will, I will coordinate with Sandy to make sure um, it does not conflict. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, next we'll go on to uh, public invited to be heard. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak? Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. I, I will actually, uh, on that point, I didn't see Melanie s s sneak in here. This is uh, Melanie Nesky. She is one of our newest associate planners with the city of Longmont, and I am bringing her into the historic preservation fold. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, one, so I have backup, but also because, you know, it's probably some of the more fun stuff we do uh, within the planning and development department, and it's just always good to have that cross-training and such as well, so. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, welcome. Okay, well, seeing no others uh, in the audience, I will go ahead and close uh, the public invited to be heard. Uh, we do not have any uh, agenda items that are public hearing. So we'll move on to uh, new business, uh, which uh, consists of new commissioner nominations. And so uh, Commissioner Jacoby and I uh, had uh, the pleasure of uh, interviewing three uh, possible candidates. We had five total, mm -hmm. one of whom was not eligible because of some technical uh, had not been a registered voter in the yeah. city of Longmont for at least a year. Yeah. And the other unfortunately dropped out of the interview process. So sort of withdrew effectively, but uh, still it was a, I think it was a good, good, three good conversations. So mm -hmm. um, 
and we have some. So, just for everyone else's uh, um, uh, understanding on the commission, we we had a set of uh, sort of rote questions that are on every interview. We, we rank the candidates one through five um, on a point system, and then uh, Commissioner Jacoby and I both had kind of a, l a little bit of off script question uh, for each, and then we tally up. Um, the uh, sort of grading, if you will, uh, but again, I think we had all three. All three were were good candidates. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, and so the consensus, um, yeah, the, there was a little difference on which one you, the two of you, rated as number one and number two, but the top two candidates were the same. So the top two candidates were uh, Mary Frances O'Day and Sue Henderson. So uh, both who met the the qualifications and. Um, so I will be preparing the memo if this commission is good, is, is agreeable to those two candidates for the, for the open alternate positions. Um, I will prepare the memo and forward that to the clerk's office. Okay. So I'll go ahead so and... I'll just need a motion uh, on that. Right. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and make that if that's acceptable. Um, yeah, to, uh, I'll move that uh, the Preservation Commission recommends to council the appointment of... Um, Ms. O'Day and Ms. Henderson uh, to the alternate commission members. Uh, so moved by Chairman Lane and commission uh, seconded by Commissioner Jacoby. All those in favor or well, actually, let's see, uh, is there any discussion? Anybody questions? Sorry, I, I should have ramrodded that. Uh, didn't mean to. <laughs> All right. All those in favor? <laughs> Any opposed? None? Okay. Motion carries. And if you would uh, convey uh, to our first uh, candidate, uh, Call Call Coffer? Emily, yeah. Emily Call Coffer. Um, that we did very much appreciated the conversation and it in no way reflects any, um, you know, I mean, just there were other it was, candidates. It was a very tight, it was a very tight spread. <laughs> yes. And we'd be welcome. I mean, this, as you, we have seen, it was, this, this was a lot of candidates this time, but there have been times when we've had few. So yes. uh, if she was interested in, in either joining another uh, board in town, great, or come back again when we're back uh, in need of additional members. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now on to prior business, our historic survey plan. Yes, so the survey plan has been formatted and was forwarded as part of the, pa of, uh, as part of the package. Um, I have the version on that was in the package on the screen. I will note that I have made some red lines um, that I've already forwarded to the um, to the consultant Joshua Hava at Ayers. Um, there was a little bit of a it took them a little longer, largely because the portion of their team who was doing the actual document production is based out of the Tampa office, and they didn't have power for much of the month of October, so and part of September. So, yeah, one of many reasons I'm glad to not live in Florida anymore. Uh, so, so there were some very real technical difficulties there. Um, I have made some stylish style edits and, and such. There was a weird typo on the cover that's been taken care of. <laughs> I was like, hmm, that's a problem. Yeah, preservation. Um, so that has been taken care of, um, as well as there were a couple things on the acknowledgments, but it was mostly related to credentials and such. So um, otherwise, the way it's organized is um, discussing existing assessments and um, you know, area, various areas of interest in terms of, you know, and then there is a strategic action plan matrix on that. Um, a, a number of our, you know, it, it, the... Areas of interest really spanned the the gamut as far as eras. So we have, um, you know, our, a continuation of our older neighborhoods. So looking at, say, Bon Farm, possibly looking at um, Kitely and Cannery and Kensington and such. Um, actually, it doesn't have Kensington listed. Um, but looking at some of the, the older kind of adjacent to the, the core neighborhoods, but also looking a little farther out to some of the mid-century neighborhoods that had some particular interest, um, in particular the Lou Miller area, which is you know, notable for 
every block being every parcel being slightly angled, which is an very interesting. It's very interesting. Um, you know, at first you thought I thought it was just the houses, but then when I was looking at the parcel maps, I'm like, wow, it's really actually the parcels that are angled. So, um, so that's that's something I actually I don't think I've ever seen that anywhere. Um, so it's pretty interesting, um, as well as some action matrices. Um, in terms of the corrections, um, I've sent them. There were some nomenclature about, you know, the Arapaho, I suggested they might want to rephrase the, the, the pre 1860s as the Arapaho nation. Um, so, and there were just some organization things as well. So, um, so in, in terms of the timeline overall, I was, I was happy with how it's organized, but just in, including some, uh, there were just some comments I made, um, relating to previous zoning and how the current zoning of, of, for example, the historic East side is and such as well. So, um, with that, I have the plan up on the screen. Um, if folks want to discuss it, I'm happy to go to the appropriate pages. Um, and if folks have specific edits, they just want to email to me and I can incorporate into a master, that will work as well. So with that, I have zero preference and we'll defer to the commission. Okay. Um, let's see, just for the sake of keeping this somewhat focused, um, let's just go section by section. Sure. And if any commissioners have any comments or questions about each section as we go, we can just kind of run through it. I think that'll keep us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead and tag your commissioner Fenster. Yes. To whom, uh, to what audience is this document directed? I would say it's a pretty broad audience. It would be members of the public, um, anyone with an interest in historic preservation. It's also a baseline document for seeking grant funding to um, initiate additional survey work. Um, so it's it's a multifaceted off the, uh, the audience of you know the commission, members of the community, um, and ultimately potential grant funders. And do we have a, uh, a marketing plan for it? Are we, are we the commission going to uh, try to uh, publicize it and get a wider distribution, et cetera? I feel like this is really more of a framework document to help guide further policy and planning efforts. This is less of a, um, you know, this what didn't really have much. Uh, it didn't necessarily have a public involvement component, um, but subsequent follow-up efforts would have that public component. So um, it's it's hard to say, you know, whether or not it's something that we need to market or if it's something that really is helping to guide future efforts uh, internally. Uh, I think uh, it's kind of a hybrid internal-external document. Um, I, I want to suggest that we give some consideration to proactively marketing the document, uh, which is by way of saying uh, broadening the public interest in historic preservation and uh, using this document uh, as a means to enlarge interest in the subject. Uh, you know, we sit here kind of cloistered and uh, there, there is, and this is an intellectual community, and might very well be interested in having such a document and walking the streets and using it, uh, et cetera. So, I, I, I want to suggest against cloistering the whole effort, and the opposite, which is marketing the effort. I'll certainly be sharing this with. Um the Longmont Museum, as well as the Historical Society. It's um, still a small audience. It's a small audience, but they, they, have a, they have a broader reach as well. Yeah, but why shouldn't we put the document in a position where people will want it and walk the streets with it and uh, make, make use of it? It would certainly be posted on the city's website as well. Um, and we can, I can definitely work with our communications team to share it via our social media and other networks, yeah. other, other realms as well. 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. If, is even if it's just a, if it's clearly once it's completed, it's posted on the website, and then if there's even just a, um, uh, you know, I guess Longmont leader came went away and came back, but uh, you know, some little p press release mm -hmm. and in the Times Call, the Longmont sure. leader just I'll, I'll, letting I'll, it be out there. I'll certainly work with our yeah. comms team um, in terms of you know once it's finalized to to push it out. Thank you for the comment. Um, Let's see. Uh, let's see, Commissioner Barner. Yeah, uh, in response to Commissioner Fenster, there, there is an active outreach considered in this plan. That uh, so I think I think we'll get to that as we go further on, and you may want to take your comments and refer them to the specific outreach that goes on um, in that. Um, I don't know if you want to start going through uh, sections or what. Yeah, I'd like to take the first section, just the context and history, uh, the you know, the, basically the introductory section, uh, and just ask for any comments from commissioners on that particular section yeah, if uh, you have them. Generally, I think the uh, choice of photographs is kind of threw me a little bit. Um, it says fire department in downtown Longmont on, uh, but that's not the fire department. It's a, it's a, it used to be the fire department, maybe, I don't even know when, but it's just not, it's misleading um, on, on the, uh, right at, what, page 26 of the, of the whole packet. Yes, that would be more appropriately labeled as the Firehouse Arts Center. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the, uh, it took me a second, uh, even though I live here, to figure out where Longmont was on the map. But then I, I finally saw the little star. But maybe that star could be a little bigger, uh, just because we want to point out where Longmont is. Um, Good call. <laughs> I think the, uh, um, the, the, the uh, it's a building in downtown Longmont, and it, it, it's, it's, it's I mean, this is just an example of pictures that were chosen and how they were chosen. I, I like the uh, the key historical milestones. I thought that was good. Page 29, I think that might be one of the typographical errors that you're talking about, I hope, in the, under development pressures. It's on page 29. It says the uh, project team identified several key errors where this is occurring near the... Mm, which page did you have Near that on? The, mm, <laughs> there is no. Which? The development pressures paragraph. Which page are you on? Off. Page 29. Oh, 29. I missed that. Good catch. Good catch, okay. Fourth paragraph. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Last word. Okay, I think I'm looking at a different number of page. What is the actual page so number? Page six is the. Uh, okay, that's uh, that's what I was. Needing. Under development pressures. Yes, I believe that is something I have also. I didn't. Uh, yeah, that's. I didn't. I, I like the Hotel Longmont picture. Uh, although it's sourced from an, a magazine, mm -hmm. a, a newspaper doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. You might want to get it sourced from something that's sourceable. Yeah. I mean, the long out leaders out of publications. So. I think they started back up, though, didn't they? Yeah, I think they did. Yeah. Really? They said they were going to. They said they were going to. I hope so. Yeah. I will um Yeah, I mean there's, I, I'll, there's I'll, other sources you can use, I'm sure. We actually probably have something in our records from their application yeah. with the city as well. Okay. So and I'm not sure what to take from the granary picture. I just don't, you know, it's just a green box. Yeah. Um on page uh, 7 Um, there's the, the talks about the environmental loss, the wildfire risk, the floods, the flood risk, 
but there's no mention of the uh, of the St. Vrain Greenway as a response to the floods. Mm -hmm. I've read through the whole mm -hmm. thing, looking for it a couple times, but I think that the development of the St. Vrain Greenway is a major piece of work that, that was that was done in Longmont. Uh, and it really, it, 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 it's more than just uh, flood control. I mean, it's mm -hmm. major recreation and mm -hmm. A lot of other things, but it just doesn't, it's not in here at all. Yeah. Um, and then, <laughs> I guess on uh, page nine, I just thought the pictures were weak. Uh, elite barbershop, you know, and downtown Longmont sign of J.C. Penny Meat Market. I mean, I just... I would have chosen three completely different. I don't know which ones I would have chosen, but they wouldn't have been those three. Do you know the Elite Barber Shop is the oldest business in the city of Longmont? Well, okay. It's been around since the 1800s. But I mean, they, it, that's not explained in this picture. Yeah, I was going to say the captions, uh, the captions definitely need more context. I, I agree with that statement okay, completely. So that's that's, that's <clears throat> section be, one, yeah. Steve. So yeah, I'll, okay. I'll wait till we get to the next. Okay, perfect. Yeah. It, it, Weirdly enough, the, the picture of downtown Longmont is, um, it used to be where my office was. <laughs> no, this is very weird. I got kicked out because she wanted a bigger store bigger. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, let's see. I, I have a couple comments, but do any other commissioners have any uh, for on this section? No? Um, so, uh, yeah. I had a couple of comments. Um, oh, let's see. I'm going to try to find the real page here. 20, it's, it's page two. Uh, the integration with broader city goals. It's one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. fourth paragraph down. Uh, so it, the last sentence in that paragraph says, in, includes avoiding the boulderingation of Longmont. I think it and should I, have been boulderization, I, but yeah, that's very cringy. Then, it's sort of like, I know we threw this around a little bit in the retreat and it's sort of a funny thing, but I don't, I don't know that it really belongs in a document like this, right? I think there's a more professional way to say yeah. that, mm -hmm. right? Um, <laughs> so that, that's my comment there. Um, and let's see. Oh, on the timeline, um, there was, well, so there was that little um, plaque, picture of the plaque with JCPenney, but there's no mention in the timeline of the JCPenney store. And, and that's a big enough thing that's recognizable by enough people that I think that ought to be on the timeline. Um, and there's no, that I, I didn't find any um, acknowledgement of the Dickens family on that timeline either. Yeah. And where that's such a big, yeah, with and, the early and, and I'm probably missing something else, but I just feel like that. I, I realize this doesn't need to be exhaustive, but if we're really going to put it in here, then let's just make sure we have some of the major key points, um, uh, because it, it and it and it covered some of you know it covered some of the early stuff, and uh, if, I'm pretty sure it covered the Kanemoto's, or at least the something about that um, the Japanese Americans and POWs. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's it's like make sure we have some of this context, but let's make sure we get the big big items on there. Uh, I think that's all I had on that section. Let's see, Commissioner Sibley. It's just sort of an odd, oddly related thing, but I could not find that J.C. Penney sign. I tried to show my father <laughs> about two months ago, and I could not find it. Um, and so I don't know if it's actually still in the building. So unless I was looking in the wrong block, but um, anyways. Neither here nor there, really, but just out of curiosity if anybody sees it since we're talking about mm -hmm. all this. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I would sort of echo Commissioner Barnett's comment about the granary image. Yeah. I'm also kind of trying to understand a little bit about what they're trying to say here um, because, you know, if this is development pressured to a degree – um, those two, well, certainly the hotel lot, I mean, it's not, you know, it's on a parking lot. Right. Yeah, and so, yeah. and I don't necessarily, I mean, I don't object. I don't think that's the worst thing that ever happened on that corner. You know, the building might maybe could have a little more, you know, 
detail to it, maybe, but I mean that's a debatable thing. It's not. It's not. A, it's not a horrible thing that's happening. So I and, also and the don't scale, want the scale is not completely out of context either. No. So and, and I think maybe the need what they need to say is is an example of X. Right. Like if this is infill and it's not necessarily bad infill, uh, this is going to happen in a in a downtown if we have a little bit more structure about what is you know, if we're going to eventually talk about a preservation plan that has some recommendations for design guidelines and so on, that's that's an, that's potentially appropriate. But I don't want to necessarily have these two uh, projects be seen in this document as something that's bad. Right. right. It needs to be framed better. Yeah. Okay. And I think I made similar comments about that as well. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Commissioner Barnert. Yeah, um, I guess while you were talking, I noticed another <laughs> under hotel the hotel Longmont, the description of it. Uh, it's Third Ave, I think Ave should be. Oh, that was that was one of my comments to yeah. them was to and spell Kim it Mark out. Right, S T right, with a small S. Yeah, wherever yeah. you see those, ignore them because I've okay. already taken yeah. them to task for that. All right. <laughs> Really, they should have sort of a semi-public thrashing for misspelling preservation on the cover, though. They, they, yeah, <laughs> they, they, they got that thrashing. They've gotten some of the some of the stylistic question, stylistic comments as well, as far as you know, consistently in spelling out things right. and such. So. Enough, thank you. Also, don't understand. I mean, I think it's nice to have a picture of the Elks Lodge. I'm not sure that it where why it's there in. Place making benefits on, on page eight. Mm -hmm. Picture of the Elks Lodge, which is not a very good picture either. No. Um, but uh, I don't have any problem. I mean, I, Elks Lodge is a good place. But what's the message? What do we? What's the purpose of putting a picture of the Elks Lodge in this particular community building benefits mm -hmm. and place making benefits? I don't see the connection. You want to put it someplace else? Fine, you know. But uh, I think the pictures should enhance the text. Yeah, as opposed possible. to raising. This is actually almost one where it might be beneficial just to not even have a picture. Yeah, yeah, okay, Commissioner Jacoby. Just looking at a lot of the pictures, I think they used a lot of city and public buildings just for permission's sake, I thought. Mm -hmm. But you could put a picture of St. Stephen's Church there because, again, that is community building mm -hmm. a church, yeah. and that would fit there quite nicely. Yeah, it's a good suggestion. Yep, adding that. Appropriate. Okay, uh, let's see. So let's move on to the second uh, section, which is existing assessments. Um, so let's see, Commissioner Barnard. Uh, page 11, I, I see a, a, a right rectangle on the left side. It says 2021 There's, historic east side. There, on this, okay, you didn't, see there is an application. It, it didn't print on, I guess it didn't print on mine. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, that exists here. Um, and I, I also made some highlights about, you know, that the commission has actively pursued funding through the CLG program. Um, and because the historic East side, and that was a question for the commission because um, those surveys were done prior to my time, I was unclear of, you know, it's I, my impression was that these were driv community driven by HENA. I just, um, okay. Okay. I just, that was, that was what I wanted to clarify as well. Okay. We use neighborhood improvement grant funds for that. Okay. So those were city grants, correct? Yes. Um, and my comment on this section is just that the, I think there's potentially a sort of inordinate amount of space given to those technical memos at the Dickens. Mm -hmm. or, I mean, the, you know, it's not, it's, it's appropriate to reference them, I think, but but it sort of makes it into a bigger deal than it is. I mean, there's a lot more information in those historic Eastside survey, you know, in the surveys, 
um, those two technical memos came out of basically one project's require, you know, our pushing back on a project. Um, and it's, uh, you know, I think it's, it was a good win, but that, that just it was maybe an overmuch importance to them. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, they found a lot of cool old bottles. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I'm, and Holly's not here to, to, you know, say. <laughs> to speak no, up the agri bottles. <laughs> yeah, like archaeological uh, importance is, may, is uh, significant. But at any rate, that's my comment there. Any other commissioners have questions or comments? Um, let's see, Commissioner Barnard. Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to open it up on my uh, computer, but on page 13, when I printed it, it didn't, uh, nothing showed up. Uh, it is, there's a large picture of the cannery, cannery. building. Yeah. 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 Okay. So third, then that picture and the picture of the East side district and the picture of the West side district. Um, forget about downtown historic for a second, but just those three. Longmont looks like a very black and white city. <laughs> uh, and, you know, the whole idea is this is supposed to be attractive. And uh, what you're, you're showing the east side historic district looks very dank. And the west side district, which is, you know, no, notorious for its greenery, is uh, just an old... Yeah. Part of the a house with a tr big tree, and you know. Terrible. I think these pictures were pulled from the um, well, cultural surveys and landmark files, so many of those were black and white. Yeah, but there's no. We're we're, we're not. The purpose of this picture is not to show what the West Side District, for instance, looked like back. You know, then it's to show what it looks. Like. I mean, what is it? What is it now? Do we have color photos on file? Yeah. I would have to look. Um, I can go take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you know. Uh, they don't have to be on file to be used. And then on page uh, 18, I, downtown historic district. You that, know, it, it's very <laughs> pixelated, but it's also well, but, a historic it, picture. So, But it doesn't. The, the point is, of this picture, take a look at the right. It's the current district. Take a look at the left. It's a it's a historic view of yeah. of hundred years ago. You know, why why can't we show a vivid downtown historic district picture? You know, that's that's comparable to the vivid out, outline on the right. Same thing when you look at the next page on page nineteen. Downtown history. I'm not even sure where that is, but it looks really old. <laughs> Anything else, Commissioner? I got a couple people in the queue here, so no, go ahead. All right, <laughs> Commissioner Fenster. Yeah, uh, some of the questions that have been asked thus far. Uh, what uh, What is the market for this document? What are we going to use it for? So this market is really to identify areas that need to be that we need to capture. You know, I, it was to identify where we have existing historic surveys, what the gaps are, and what additional areas of the city that we need to look at pursuing historic surveys on to um, catalog and document. Yeah. It's, so a, it's a asset. foundational document yeah. for the uh, a future preservation plan. Yeah. We can't get to a preservation plan unless we have the data that that sets us up as to where right. we are now. Mm -hmm. So this this is not a document that's going to be picked up and used by people who are going to walk the areas. No, okay. this is very much a technical document. Okay, okay. Well, that answers my question. Okay, uh, let's see, Commissioner Jacoby. Uh, just in reference uh, to what was just said, I, since it, we're talking about historical preservation in this document, I have no problem with old pictures, mm -hmm. uh, but an isolated picture here when there's not doesn't others quite. doesn't quite fit it. Maybe every couple could be historic, and certainly the museum has 
a lot of pictures, including a much better, they have many better pictures of Main Street than this one. Okay. It's kind of blurry. And uh, yeah, they could have a, a much better picture, I think. Um, let's see. I had uh, I had one comment about the maps in in general. Uh, I was I thought they were pretty fun to to get into. Um, the uh, the way that they represented surveyed properties, mm -hmm. I think, was really hard to follow. Like it took me a while to figure out what's going on there. So something that because it's just basically one little tiny white dot mm -hmm. that gets lost when you're looking at it. Um, so I, that's my one comment graphically is if we could find a better way to represent the properties that have been surveyed because it doesn't – you get a really great sense of time period looking at the map in a broad way, but, but no real clue what's surveyed and not surveyed. And arguably that's like literally the most important thing yep. that we're doing here. Um, so I think that needs a little bit of improvement. And then I'm assuming that you caught the typo on page 19 at the uh, label of the downtown historic historic buffer map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the whole yes, yeah, the hist work. Yeah, that was yeah. But but yeah. The fun fun fact is that things like in design don't always have spell check. Yeah. Which is yeah. very frustrating. Yes. Uh and then so my other question uh especially with re regards to really the first section so I should have brought it up then but even this one um is uh, you know would this document get reviewed by anybody at the museum before we issue it? Is it appropriate to get the director could, to comment? I could certainly forward it to them for, for comment before it's finalized. My personal opinion is that would not be harmful and potentially be of value. So, Yeah, I can, I can touch base with Elizabeth over at the museum. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, any other comments on Section 2 before we move on? No? Okay. All right, I'll open it up to section three areas of interest. Any, any comments there? Ernie? So I, I'm curious if you, um, Jennifer, know just exactly kind of what, what their strategy, I mean, how they ended up where they did. Sure. So some of it was driven by feedback from the retreat, um, identifying those areas. Um, other thing, other guidance um, I know that I gave them was would be to look at um, when the sub significant subdivisions were subdivided. That was a big driver for a lot of these areas as well. Um, so looking at you know distinctive architecture um, or distinctive development patterns. Um, but also looking at, um, you know, where do we have some fairly complete area, where area is still pretty complete, um, but really looking at when, when areas were platted and developed as well. Okay. So, so the city subdivision map was a big draw, was, was one of the, the data points that was used. Okay. Print this out. Um, I find this really yeah. hard to read. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's just the way that it's reading on the computer screen, but I'm finding the maps and everything really difficult to read. Um, is that? Is it just maybe this particular file and how it's opening? Are you guys having the same issue? Mm hmm. Uh, I see some of them that are a little grainier than others, and I, and I wonder if the maps can be included as an appendix again, mm -hmm. you know, st which is pretty standard in these kind of plans where we, where we get bigger scale maps kind of a, as an appendix mm -hmm. just so that you can refer to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as an 11 by 17. Yeah. That would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, 
Oh, so, yeah, I think you alluded to this already, uh, but uh, on page 38, when it talks about, um, let's see, this is just one of the Lou Millers, maybe. Um, trying to, oh, sorry, no, that's the wrong 38. My bad. I'm going back. I'm trying to get to your pages and using the wrong pages. Uh, get to the right page here. Oh, okay. I, I got myself a little lost in the page 38 is page 15, uh, back and forth. There was some a reference to the East Side District, and I think you mentioned this before. So it's page 15, so we're back on section two, so that's my bad. Um, the, there, was the, there was the reference to recent zoning changes, uh, and that's what you were talking about. Okay, all right. I just wanted to make sure of that. Yeah. Correct, in, yeah. In the, in the East Side District, because that's... Right. It was. It hasn't allowed for multifamily since right, right. basically okay. ever. All right. Okay. Yes. All right. I picked up that, and I just wanted to. I meant to ask. For yeah, a that was a big. That. that was a big flashing red light to yeah, me. Yeah. Okay. Good. Me, me too. Just. Okay. I, I mean, you know, I think that the there's a lot of great information in here with with all of these uh, districts. I I mean, I kind of feel like I want to take this thing and run it around town you know again mm -hmm. and, and just get it in my head as to where everything is but I, I, I mean overall with the detail um, you know I was generally happy with with what we ended up getting here so um, and it doesn't sound like we have any other comments on these sections no okay okay great um, so then that really kind of takes us all the way down to the appendix, which is really, which really is, I don't know that it's an appendix. Yeah, it's really where the rubber hits the road. <laughs> it's like, it's the point of the document. Um, but yeah, the, an action plan. Um, and so if I'm understanding this right, so they've got, uh, you know, each one of these neighborhoods sort of categorized um, and then it's really up to us to then as a commission to decide kind of where to essentially sort of rank them as to where we think the, the uh, priority ought to be. And it, so if you, if to the commissioners, I mean, essentially this, this dollar amount on the right hand side is going to correspond to what it costs to get a survey of that mm -hmm. particular neighborhood done, right? A cultural resource survey where somebody literally like uh, a Carl McWilliams goes in and, property by property does an assessment of the, you know, the time that it was built and yeah. who, whoever might have lived there of significance and yeah, architectural is, significance and so on. That's a good question because apparently I've, I'm, I, has Carl really made good on his threats to retire? <laughs> yeah, I don't so Well, we not find. so far okay. that I know, but I'm sure it's not long. He, he's been saying for, I think what, 10 years, I'm retiring soon. So just want to make sure if there are, see if there are other folks that we, that might be. Yeah. And I've done some research to. and I think there are, there are three or four other firms that do that sort of work up and down the front range. So I think there are other That'd folks, but, but that's basically what we're looking at is, you know, taking one of these other neighborhoods and saying, okay, we, we want to, we want to develop essentially what we have for a decent amount of the East side um, and come up with, you know, funds that would that would pay somebody to take a neighborhood and really begin to document. And it's there's no, I don't think there's a real downside to anyone. There's no, there shouldn't be any necessarily harm to anybody's property in any way. I mean, this is just a this is the information about this particular property. Mm -hmm. Boom. It's just a it's just a piece of paper. Um, but obviously, we don't have this money, and we need to um, to go ahead and. Uh, request grant money from the state in order to to hire these consultants and with I mean there's a lot of dollars here um, so we're being asked to kind of say okay relative to all the information that's been provided what what do we think the the priorities are that that a fair mm -hmm. summary does that mean we need to go through the website Okay. By item. Oh, yeah, would you, Bye. Commissioner, would you? Does that mean we need to go through the left side item by item? 
No, I think what it means is that uh, this was going to be my recommendation that everyone here take this um, because it's it's obviously a lot of information. Take this uh, and come back next month, oh. uh, having having filled out this page right or these two pages, the uh, page forty seven and forty eight. Mm -hmm. Come back, uh, you know, maybe. Uh, a few days before the hearing and, and, uh, you know, print these out and shoot, ship them over to Jennifer. I was going to say, if you would, I would, I would recommend if you put your priority list together and send it to me and I can compile it and, um, you know, identify where we have consensus. Yeah. Right. And, and again, it's, it's just about where do we think the, the first grant <laughs> yeah. ought to be focused on, right? Because essentially what we're going to end up doing is we're going to, uh, between staff and, and some commissioners that have made uh, a, a volunteer to, to assist, um, and I presume we're going to need to, um, I presume we would need to ask council uh, for permission to do this, but I don't know uh, if, if, if it's getting funded. Uh, but at any rate, uh, the idea would be to, um, you know, put in a request to the, State Preservation Office to fund or to get a grant money to then hire a consultant to go ahead and, and create one of these surveys and and really have a plan to kind of run through them in some kind of order over time because if we could get all of that information together then we would have a really great foundation of, of information about properties in the city. Okay, I think I've talked enough for a moment. Uh, Commissioner Jacoby. Yes, just looking at this matrix, how did they get the conclusions for surveys recommended yes or no and report priority high, low, medium? I mean, we, I don't, is this just, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what to do with that information and yeah. is that misleading? Isn't that what you're saying, Steve, we should be really doing at this point? Um, but why would they not recommend a survey at, at some instances and some instances, yes. I, I don't understand where that information came from. It it looks like they just, well, okay, I don't know about the Longmont Estates, but otherwise it looks like basically West Side, East Side, downtown, which we already have some, I mean, I guess I'm presuming because we already have some. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It is a weird, it's a, it's a good yeah. question though, right? It, it, it's, it's odd. Right. And even with the west side and east side, there's more homes to be surveyed. So right, right. I wouldn't automate. Maybe it's a lower priority, perhaps. But again, I don't. I don't know where. And the report priority. I'm not sure where that came from. Maybe it's for, some of it correlates with redevelopment pressures. I noticed, but it doesn't correlate exactly. So I'm not really sure where that came from either. Uh, Commissioner Fenster. Yeah. Well, that that was sort of my question also. Should we be prioritizing? Should we be making a recommendation on priorities for these items? I, I, I mean, I personally think that's our job, right? Mm -hmm. We take this yeah. information yeah. and we decide yeah. what we're based on our knowledge and experience and, and so on. And what tools should we be using? Should we be relying on the recommendations of others and then putting in our own or... How should we go about it in an orderly way? If we want to take all these items and give them a priority because some may not get funded, uh, what is the protocol for doing that? I, I mean, I think that's up to each commissioner yeah. to make a decision about what they uh, feel is important, right? I mean, that's why we have all these different, I mean, it's why we have different perspectives on the commission, right? Because I might have a different perspective than you and so on and so forth. And so you, we all each make our own recommendations based on our perspectives and experience. Should we bring them to the next meeting? Or? Th that's what yeah. I would like. I would like if we I'll can. Invite Josh. Yeah, if we can, if we can, I mean, I guess I, I appreciate Commissioner Jacoby's comments about some of the confusion, but in the end, it's about prioritizing money, the, 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 where we want to allocate dollars to what neighborhoods in what order. And so if commissioners can come back prior to next month's meeting and just rank, fill in that exact third column yeah. from the mm -hmm. left, uh, 
in the order that they feel is important and hand that over to Jennifer prior to the meeting, we can have some idea of yeah. where where it kind of lands and then we can discuss it, whether we can argue about whether, you know, one should be three or four or whatever, but we can at least have some information and we'll all have some, had some time to digest. Okay. Uh, let's see, Commissioner Sibley. Yeah, just a quick question. Um, the date ranges on page 48, is that when these were put on the re on the National Register? It's 1987 yes. and 2017. Okay, so it's not. I think, in, ter I think in terms of the National Register districts, those are when the listings occurred. Perfect. Okay, cool. And that's probably something that needs to make, be made a little more clear. Okay. Yeah. And then on page 47... There's a three slash four nineteen oh five for Old North, and I wasn't quite sure what that meant either. But hmm. I'm not sure what that means either. Okay. So I will. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> did not random. catch that. <laughs> right. Okay. So thank you. That was something I will. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Barnard. Yeah. I'm. Um, uh... Uh, can, can I conclude that the um, reason the sugar mill isn't on here at all is because that's not in the city limits? Correct. And there are also some pretty extensive planning efforts already associated with that area. So, um, you know, it's not fully incorporated into the city, but there's also a larger um, sub area plan that's been completed for that sugar factory area. So um, it's... I don't want to say it's being taken care of, but we have that. There are substantial planning efforts that have have been undertaken for that project, for that that property area. Okay. Other commissioner questions or comments? Mm -hmm. All right. I think we have. Are we clear on marching orders? Everybody's got homework. We'll have to. So just to, to recap, I'm going to take the notes and edits that I have received from everyone here this evening and consolidate them into a red line document to send over to our consultants so they can go ahead and get moving on some of those things. Um, in the meantime, commissioners are going to go through the action matrix and put their rankings in and send those to me ahead of the next meeting. So... Yep, send them ahead to the meeting so that we can get, I can get those consolidated so we can have a, this is where everything landed. Is everyone cool with that? Yep. And um, with regard to Commissioner Norton, uh, mm -hmm. would you like to reach out to her about that or should I about what we're... I can reach out to okay, her. Just so that she knows and isn't blindsided by this. Shit. Okay. Well, it's exciting to see, uh, you know, we, the tendency with these things is to sort of start nitpicking them and get into, into them. And I, I don't want to um, make it seem like this is uh, not an exciting yeah. uh, piece. And there's not obviously a, a lot of work that has been done that's very much appreciative. And uh, I think this is a, a great step in really moving forward. So something we've been talking about for a long time. And it's always kind of nice. I think it's important to celebrate those moments when you actually see some progress happen and you've talked about it for Years. <laughs> yes. We have tangible products. <laughs> so thank you for uh, working with heirs to, to make this happen. Okay, great. Well, um, that was fun. Uh, let's see. Then now we're basically uh, through the meat of the meeting here. Any uh, other comments from commissioners? No. Any comments from uh, Mayor Peck, our city council rep? I just wanted to say thank you for this survey. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I had no idea about all of the areas, like the cannery area. I had no idea it was so large. I just thought it was just that one building. So it's very educational. So thanks. Thank you. All right. Great. Well, that was a productive meeting. Um, I would now entertain a motion to adjourn. You're, you're, I, so, yeah. <laughs> okay. Moved by Commissioner Sibley. Seconded by Commissioner Jacoby. All those in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 And thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.